So um, our family's been on the shores of Pigeon Lake for many years and in 2006 an event happened that changed my life and spawned the Pigeon Lake Watershed Association and ultimately the Pigeon Lake Watershed Management Plan. I arrived from work and walked out onto the pier and the pier was surrounded in a, a blue-green algae gloom that had become iridescent and very smelly um, and it really changed the trajectory of my, the rest of my life. As a young girl, we used to come swim at Pigeon Lake and it was clean and pristine. And then a few years later, it was not. It was dirty, it was gross. Um, there was leakages, there was all kinds of algae, blue-green algae. There was all kinds of damages that were being done to the lake. After winter, for instance, we get all kinds of traffic through here and so on and so forth. They bring in salts, hydrocarbons, rubber compounds and all that kind of stuff and it comes here. Uh, this is a highly developed area. Um, it was logged, um, there is a lot of cottage development, there's agricultural use all around it. So the Pigeon Lake uh, Watershed Association was established in uh, 2007 in response to those large outbreaks of blue-green algae. It's a, um, a watershed stewardship group. So the Pigeon Lake uh, Watershed Association's primary role is to promote stewardship and promote better understanding, provide information, and, and undertake uh, uh, projects such as improving the science promoting science and, and advocating for the lake. Right now, for example, we're advocating very much to provide better defenses against invasive species. I am a counselor for Samson Cree Nation and Susan reached out to me asking me if I would be willing to participate in a group, which we later named the Mama Way Group, which means working together in Cree. And it includes the Four Nations and members from the Pigeon Lake Watershed Association. <laughs> So a watershed, it's like a basin. It is where the water flows from an uppermost point into the bottom, which is the, wa the water body at the bottom of the basin. So it separates the flow of water from one watershed into the center. Blue-green algae is a part of a healthy ecosystem. It's part of the food web. It will get out of balance if there is an imbalance in nutrients in the lake. It's primarily driven by an excess of phosphorus that comes uh, from the land. These things build up the uh, blue-green algae along with other forms of life, including uh, aquatic vegetation, will become much more abundant. And they are somewhat of a concern from a health perspective. Our lake has prematurely aged. Uh, and if we can take care of the land, and if we can restore that land to some of its natural state, that will help reduce algal blooms and increase the recreational value of the lake. So the Pigeon Lake Watershed Association uh, has undertaken a watershed management plan that, that falls within the Water for Life policy of Alberta government. And that plan is, is a, a guideline for a lot of different stakeholders in the watershed to cooperatively move forward on initiatives to promote the health of the lake and the watershed and therefore our community. And in the watershed management plan that was created uh, is uh, a whole series of uh, recommendations and actions that different groups can take up. The Pigeon Lake Watershed Association had started up a few initiatives to try to prevent a lot of the uh, leakage that was happening, the leaching of carcinogens, and they started with these uh, planting of certain kinds of trees that would suck up carcinogens and, and areas like that, kind of like a filter. We focused on clean runoff, so we want to reduce um, the, the flow and the speed and all of the garbage that comes with stormwater. Our municipalities have come together to work with Pigeon Lake Watershed Association and um, in, in the spirit of, of implementing our Pigeon Lake Watershed Management Plan and eliminated the use of outhouses, have moved towards central sewer systems. If there are septic tanks, um, they look at maintenance programs in order to ensure that, that there's no leakage into the lake. We have tree planting campaigns. We look at planting native shrubs 
pollinator gardens, um, really supporting those things that will help. And the other thing we're trying to do is spread that news around the lake to other summer villages and, and county with Pasquin developments and so on, so that they take it up. And ultimately the goal is have it done right around the lake. A few years back, we heard from the government of Alberta and Pigeon Lake turned out to be one of the cleanest lakes in all of Alberta. The indigenous portion of the lake was the cleanest. And when I say that, I don't just mean the reserve. I mean that where it was sort of left alone and untouched and the plants and wildlife were able to grow and be wild there. Well, the plant is a living plant. As people engage with it, it it'll, it'll change. And I think, for example, uh, the Muscogee's Cree, as they come in more involved with it, could, could add chapters, you know, to it. I would like to see something sustainable. I don't want us using up all the lake water and doing something where we're exploiting the natural resources. I would like it to remain sustainable in an area where it's not damaging to the water or to the fish or to the wildlife or to any of the plants or animals that are around here, but where we can kind of be in this harmony together. And when we can come together and work on a, on a very clear and set structure and plan, um, we really have a um, well thought out way to move forward. I'm Catherine Swampy and I am a part of the Pigeon Lake Watershed Association, the Mamawe portion of it, and I am very thankful for everything that they have been doing to protect the water and the land and it's very near and dear to me, so hi hi. <laughs>